And now guys, it's very, very sad. I have destroyed my Wenptech, Wenptech, 60 volt, 20 amp power supply just uh, two weeks ago. This was when we did the 200 amp test here on the workbench. Remember when we compared the certified batteries to the non-certified batteries and we had this um, huge 200 amps going on? Because people always told me the certified cells are better under high current load. So I tested it and it is total nonsense. Anyway, while testing, we had some issues with one of the bus bar connections to the terminals of one of the cells. And I had to restart the test a couple of times, but I had already discharged the batteries just a tiny bit. And to be fair, I had to recharge the battery. So we could actually compare the results to the non-certified cells later on. And recharging, I usually use this power supply for it. And for some reason, I guess it was a late night show and I was a bit tired already and I wanted to start the discharge test. I connected the power supply the wrong way. So positive, negative, the other way around, and it sparked. I said, well, what's going on here? Why is it sparking? And I tried again, spark. Big spark. Then I looked at my installation here and said, ah, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, I have to pre-charge the capacitors inside the power supply because they are usually on zero volts and you connect your 12 volt battery or your 48 volt battery and you get a big spark. You know, all these capacitors here and I usually activate the power supply for a second and this turns on the output of the power supply and charges your capacitors to the set voltage. So you've got 12 volt because then you have 12 volt on the power supply and 12 volt on the battery, same level and hmm, no sparky spark anymore. So I turned it on and could see the voltage going up to 12 volt and then turned it back off again and it keeps the capacitors charged for a while and then I reconnected the cables again and a big spark again. I said, well, yeah, f it, it's already late. I want to get this done. And I had them connected the wrong way around and I turned on the power supply. Um, well, and I was wondering why it didn't charge. Yeah, and after a few seconds, I could actually smell it. And then I found my mistake. Okay, that was the end of the WEMP T tech, the WEMP tech. Well, and then the power supply showed only zero zero volts and zero zero amps, and I couldn't adjust anything anymore. And I used I used a small power supply, but this one takes forever. It has only five amps. So, well, I took it apart and said, well, let's have a look, and couldn't see anything burned or so, no burn marks, nothing. And of course, I did the usual <laughs> sniffing test. It smelled a bit burned in this area here. So I took out the PCB, took off the aluminum heatsink, and found all these and found all these components underneath. So obviously this is a rectifier here with four legs. This is the 230 volt coming in and then it gets rectified and being pushed to the capacitors here and also the transformer. And this part here with the inductors and capacitors is where the magic happens. So we have two of these MUR 3020PT. These are ultra fast recovery diodes. And I measured these two here and they are both toast. And in each of these devices are two diodes. You can see probably the symbol up here. There's one diode, there's the other one. And they are meeting in the middle, which is our middle contact here. So there's one diode connected from here and the other one is connected from this side. And these devices are being used as rectifiers for switching power supplies, DC to DC converters or DC to AC inverters. And they are very fast reacting diodes. So it makes them ideal for buck converters. And this is basically exactly what we have inside the power supply. Okay, I must admit finding these two faulty devices, there was a bit of luck involved as well. But I also had to look at all the other components under this heatsink and the rectifier with the four pins was actually connected to the input where the 230 volt came in. And well, quite frankly, the power supply was still working. When I switched it on, it did the self-test, showed me the software version on it and also zero volts and zero amps. So obviously the power supply was still intact. And the other two devices looked more like MOSFETs. So this would have been my next best guess. But these two recovery diodes here, they were actually connected directly to the output area of the power supply. And this is where we connected the batteries the other way around to it. So I thought, well, start with these two first and see how we go. And before I unsoldered these two devices, I didn't know what they actually are. They looked like MOSFETs from the other side. But then Googling for the MUR3020PT, it was quickly clear that these were just diodes. And here I made this quick drawing. This is basically how it looks like. So one pin goes through a diode, 
connects to the middle pin and the other side comes with another diode connects to the middle pin as well. If you're not familiar with this, a diode is basically a one-way valve. It lets the current flowing only in one direction and in the other way it blocks it. So this is basically exactly what we have here. One diode comes through this pin to the middle and the other diode comes through this pin to the middle as well. So we have our anode or positive on this side and the cathode or negative on the other side. And if we just use this general diode here, you can see the symbol up there, the anode on this side and the cathode on this side. So it's now the same way around as on the drawing here. So if I go positive here, negative over here, we can see we've got a voltage drop of 0.53 volts. And if I swap the multimeter, this is the block direction, there's no current flowing. So we've got an infinite voltage drop. Current flowing, current blocking. So with this one here, we should have, see there's nothing. This one is gone. And the other diode gone as well. If I turn them around, nothing, nothing. This one is not doing anything anymore. Zero. What about the second one? Negative in the middle. Positive nothing. Ah, here we go. But look at this. It is zero. Zero volts. So this is a short. And the other way around. There. There's a short. So regardless which way around I measure this diode, we always have this four millivolt. Very easy to recognize. There's a short. And here, and this one has died completely. And while if we take a new one, anode over here, 0.4 volts, other side, 0.4 volts. And if I turn them around, we should measure nothing because this is the block direction. Yeah, perfect. Okay, um, without further to do, let's get them replaced. And because I couldn't get them anywhere in Australia, I had to buy them on AliExpress. Took about uh, 10 days to get uh, 10 of these. This was the minimum amount you have to order. Well, and tonight is finally the night. We want to put them in again and hope for the best that none of the other whatever MOSFETs these are here. I hope it is just the diodes. It's very good they made these squares here on the PCB so I can exactly see where I have to bend these legs. I don't think it is really important if they are sitting a millimeter this way or the other way. Oh no, actually the holes need to line up here, otherwise I can't get my screw into the heatsink. So forget what I was just saying. They need to line up perfectly. Okay, that looks good. No, 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 guys, no, no. Don't, don't be afraid, don't be afraid about this one here. It is perfect to solder these larger MOSFETs or diodes or whatever we have here. Because look at this, it can actually solder all three pins at the same time. Well, with this one, I can heat up only one leg at a time. And when I get to the third one, the other two are already cold again. That is not working. This one here is just a quick touch and we are all done. Just wait, I'll show you. There, there's no way you can solder these tracks here with a normal soldering iron. It's not possible. A funny thing I found was this up wire. They must have forgotten some track in the PCB design and then have used this wire here. But still very, very good power supplies, adjustable power supply. I can highly recommend these Vamp T-Tech power supplies. They make them of all kinds of variants from 12 volt up to 220 volt DC from 5 amps to 150 amps or something. As always, link is under the video. Oh, I think it's hot enough. You can see it glowing, right? Let me, <laughs> let me turn off the light here for a moment. And hold this in the dark. See, it can, it, it's glowing. <laughs> They're getting really hot, really hot. They're usually made for soldering gutters or soldering a train track or a ship or something, you know. <laughs> or a fast-acting recovery diode on a PCB. Hmm.
There we go. Look at this, huh? Is that easy? And you're applying the heat not even for a second. Because it's so damn fucking hot. There, bang, it's in. That's it. There we go, all three at the same time. go and now of course I'm using my small soldering iron and get the connections right <laughs> this is just for the for the rough solder but it's pretty good you know you're applying heat only for a second here and then all the pins coming through I found this brilliant and yeah, this uh, this is a 150 watt soldering iron I link this down below as well if you're interested I use the one with a white chisel Amazing for small electronics. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. Both sides have been soldered now. And it is time to put everything back together and keep the fingers crossed that everything works again. So I have connected, reconnected everything. The PCB at the front with the display, the fan, the power button and the 230 volt. Everything is reconnected. I don't connect the positive and negative here. I leave them floating around like this so they don't touch and I secured the PCB only with two screws and from here on it is pure luck if it works or not. Let's plug it in. Ah, that's a good sign. A bit of sparkling. Okay, turn it on. Comes on. It's good. So oh, we've got voltage. We've got a voltage. Oh, we've got a voltage. This did not work before. Oh, there's a good chance. Okay, we've got 8.8 .8 volts here. Positive, negative. And we have ah, AC. F shit. We have uh, zero volts. Um, zero volts here. Ah, of course not. We haven't turned it on. Okay, let's uh, close your eyes. Okay, it's turned on now. Now the output should be live. <laughs> oh God, I said no, it's not working. Okay, let's measure. Let's see, 8.74. That's close enough for me. It is working, guys. Amazing. 2.8 volts. I just want to quickly connect the light bulbs and see if there's any current flowing at, at all. Okay. Yay, we've got the light bulbs on. Nice. Okay, it's all working again. Amazing. Okay, we are chucking some heat paste on here. There's not much required. It is only to, to a smooth the uneven surface of the diodes and MOSFETs to, to ensure the best contact to the heatsink possible. Dinner is ready. I'll be right back. Okay, my friends, we finally made it and repaired the power supply. It's all working again. And thankfully, it was only these two diodes, these fast acting recovery diodes, whatever they do. As you may have seen in the time lapse, I had to re drill the hole in the PCB. So, from the PCB through the diode into the heatsink, there was a bit of a misalignment. But, um, 
a three millimeter drill bit fixed that. <laughs> I should have put a screw through the diode and the PCB before I solder it in. And that way they would have been perfectly aligned. All right, guys, I linked this wonderful device down in the description as well as, as well as the 150 watt soldering iron, just in case you want to fix some train tracks or repair the Millennium Falcon. This is the tool for it. Apparently it can also solder semiconductors on a PCB. <laughs> As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks for all your generous donations and your many, many emails, which I'm absolutely unable to respond to. But I appreciate the time it takes you to write these emails. Thank you very much. And until the next video, guys, when we do something again with... Um... <laughs> you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye. It is... Um, yeah. And I've got no parts left over. All the screws, everything, no leftovers. Well, except of these two guys. <laughs>